treatment of ethyl acetate with LDA at minus 78 degrees, and in the second step with a primary alkyl bromide, replaces one of the alpha hydrogens of that ethyl acetate with the alkyl group. I've highlighted the alkyl group in blue, and here is the new carbon-carbon bond. This is an SN2 reaction, so this guy must be primary or methyl. There's nothing magic about using bromide as a leaving group. It's a good one, but iodide is common also. Tosylate is common, and when we use methyl, methyl iodide is real common. LDA stands for lithium diisopropyl amide. It's made by treating diisopropylamine with butyl lithium, a very, very strong base, to make this lithium diisopropyl amide, which itself is a very strong base. It's strong enough so that it will remove the alpha proton of the ethyl acetate quantitatively. If all this seems pretty familiar to you, you're really on target. Using these very same conditions, a ketone can be alkylated at the alpha carbon. So the take home here is simple. Using LDA at minus 78 degrees lets you alkylate esters at the alpha position. The mechanism follows along the lines we saw for aldehydes and ketones. Using LDA as the base, the alpha proton is quantitatively removed, which leaves a pair of electrons and a negative charge on that alpha carbon. And because this pair of electrons with the negative charge is next to the carbonyl group, is stabilized by resonance. Although the resonance stabilized enolate really looks more like the right hand structure, it reacts as if it had the negative charge on carbon. So here's the SN2 reaction. This is done at low temperature, so the deprotonation is irreversible, there's no equilibrium and to suppress side reactions. So if you've looked at the mechanism of alkylation of ketones, this looks real familiar. It's exactly parallel. An alpha proton is removed in a first step, and then an SN2 step alkylates at the alpha carbon. And if you're wondering whether other esters do this, the answer is absolutely yes. The essential thing is that it has an alpha hydrogen. So this does not have to be ethyl acetate, it can be any one of a variety of esters. This will work better if there are two alpha hydrogens because we're talking about an SN2 reaction and steric hindrance can be a problem. But a single alkyl group attached to that carbon is no problem at all. So you see you can make rather complicated esters this way. And you see you can make these esters starting with ethyl acetate. Simply do two alkylations sequentially. I've shown the new carbon-carbon bond in tan, and then we can repeat this. And I put colored dots into the carbon so we can track where they came from. There are two new carbon-carbon bonds which I've shown in tan. Okay, so starting with the simple molecule, ethyl acetate, we can make complicated esters. Well, is that real useful? Yes. Esters themselves are useful, but remember, esters can be a gateway molecule to other kinds of compounds. Although there may be several reactions that could be important, two that are particularly useful include saponification to make carboxylic acids and reduction to make alcohols. Carboxylic acids can be turned into other carboxylic acid derivatives. Alcohols can be turned into halides. Carbonyl compounds like aldehydes and ketones can be dehydrated, so there are a variety of things that can be done. So the take-home message is alpha alkylation of ethyl acetate and other esters is really useful in organic synthesis. Using LDA followed by an alkylating agent like a primary alkyl bromide is one very good way to accomplish the alkylation. There's another good way, it's called the malonic ester synthesis, and I'll talk about that in another video.